Hey, what's up? This is Joe. I am uh, currently in the process of getting this NC750X uh, ready for touring, leaving for Sturgis here in a couple of days. So I don't know about you, but for me, when I see a bike like this, uh, excellent touring capability isn't really the first thing that comes to mind. Nevertheless, I uh, don't really do a lot of highway riding these days and knew that I could make a couple of mods that, uh, that would certainly uh, increase my storage capability and uh, ability to travel. Uh, one of the first things I did was get these sort of bear trap uh, dirt bike pegs, which uh, give a lot more grip. It sort of allows my foot to rest a little far farther forward. On this bike, they sort of put the foot pegs almost like a crotch rocket position where your, your knee is gonna be bent like that. And uh, at least now that I have this, I can sort of rest my foot sort of on the forward end of those uh, foot pegs. I put some side case mounts and a top box mount because I wanted to hang on to my uh, top box off the ST. It's got a lot of sentimental value. In this video, I wanted to sort of uh, explain some of my rationale as far as like, why did I choose a bike like this? And also sort of take you on a little bit of a tour of uh, my home in Southwestern Virginia and uh, some of the things that I like. My sister actually gave me a ride to West Virginia to pick this bike up. So we sort of took a road trip uh, through the mountains and uh, up some crazy narrow uh, roads to, uh, to get to this bike. So uh, if you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe and uh, as always I've included an optional donate link in the Dropbox if you'd like to contribute to this project otherwise thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road After over three years of living on a motorcycle I returned home to Southwest Virginia to tie up some loose ends and see my family for the past year and a half, I've been riding a 2006 Honda ST1300. I'd really grown attached to this bike as it had been my constant companion throughout my travels in the US and Mexico. Nevertheless, she'd been a basket case from day one, and since then, I'd been broken down frequently as I struggled to fix the results of a long time of sitting. It was becoming a nightmare. Meanwhile, I was house-sitting and doing some work for my mom, who was traveling to Alabama for my aunt's wedding. Turned out she had the hookup on some kind of experimental mystery meet from the local college, so I headed over to Virginia Tech to pick up the order. Back at home in uh, southwest Virginia, she has actually got the hookup on uh, some really cheap meat at the, uh, the local college. They do a bunch of research on livestock and experiments and things like that, and then I guess once they've done the autopsy or whatever they uh, they butcher up the meat and then you can get it at a pretty good price if it'll save me a couple bucks I'll eat some experimental cows without a problem so let's go Like a shady backroom drug deal, I pulled around at the back of the food science lab. How's it going? Oh, pretty well. How are you? Uh, so far, so good. Yeah. Nice day. <laughs> Hello. I uh, have an order to pick up. All right. All right. So I just got my uh, Italian sausage and steaks and stuff like that. For a variety of reasons, they uh, raise cows and like we'll do experiments on them and stuff and then uh, do an autopsy and butcher up the rest. This is all frozen. So I guess I'll probably uh, strap it to the top of that and then uh, head on back. got this uh, barbecued pork 
Chinese style from the uh, Oasis and some unsweetened green tea. Sugar Plum had just had four teeth removed and been treated for Lyme disease. I'd picked up a nasty sinus infection and wasn't feeling too hot myself. Together we were like two miserable peas in a pod. <laughs> I hadn't yet officially decided I was getting another bike. As I mentioned before, I was already pretty attached to this one. She was, however, becoming an absolute nightmare to work on as I continued to learn. Nevertheless, I was still on the fence and decided to go ahead and get her in ship shape one way or the other. While I waited on a brand new OEM fuel pump assembly, I took advantage of the garage space to bleed the brakes and hydraulic clutch. I'd seriously avoided doing the brakes, mostly because I hate removing the requisite plastic pieces, but also because on a linked brake system, there are about eight different points and all of them have to be bled. Not necessarily your run-of-the-mill parking lot job. All of my beautiful mystery meat cooking up nice uh, from the college. Pretty nice looking New York strip there. Some. Uh, Italian sausages. I went to school over that way. I got the dog inside because she is not coming out because she ate one of my sausages. So <laughs> you're just going to have to deal with it. That is a filthy McNasty. Nasty, scummy. Not nearly as bad as uh, the clutch was. Uh, about a year ago something like seven or eight points that uh, i have to bleed so the next part i have to uh, take this caliper uh, off and rotate it to 15 degrees that way it keeps all the air going up and keeps any air out of the from being introduced into the system This process differs greatly from a non-linked system, and after scouring the internet for advice, I found I could avoid introducing air into the system simply by attaching a length of hose to the bleeder, holding it straight up at 90 degrees, pumping the brake a few times, and allowing the pressure in the system to fill the hose. I was skeptical this would work, and mentally preparing to wrestle with air bubbles for the next several hours. Fortunately, that wasn't the case, and my brakes functioned better than ever. Since I was now in the motorcycle business, I decided to go ahead and do my hydraulic clutch, which differs slightly in that you have to close the bleeder valve before pumping the lever, just like a normal brake system. So this is the shit that I bled out of the brakes and the clutch, mostly the brakes, uh, nice uh, dark coffee color for you. I continued looking at bikes on the internet and there was one which caught my eye an NC750X by Honda. It was in the dual sport class and had a huge storage compartment where you'd expect the gas tank to be. I knew it wouldn't be a great bike for touring the vast geographical landscape of the US, but sounded perfect for Mexico. When I read people were getting upwards of 65 miles per gallon, my interest was piqued. With gas prices being the way they were, that figure sounded mighty tempting. I borrowed my mom's SUV and took a road trip to West Virginia. After checking out the bike and taking it for a long ride, I was impressed. Now I just have to find a way to get it back. So this is my sister and she's uh, getting ready to give me a ride uh, to West Virginia to pick up a motorcycle. Oh, okay. Good hunting dog. Hey Ruby. Hey Ruby. Ruby used to be my dog. <laughs> <laughs> And she still likes to jump on people, which she shouldn't do. Looks like you got a nice little horse and donkey place out here. That's a donkey over there? Yeah. And you got your horses, so you're... This is everything you have? Yeah, that's stallion up there. For as long as I can remember, my sister's been involved in riding and raising horses. 
It's an area in which I'm totally in the dark, but through the years we've shared some memorable okay. moments on horseback, riding on mountain trails. She was happy to give me a ride, she said, so I met her at her farm. I uh, feel like I have a lot less control over a horse than a motorcycle, so I'm, I'm not uh, <laughs> crazy about it. Horses kind of scare me a little bit. I trust horses more. But a mule, I'd ride a mule <laughs> if you had one that was trained right. I like mules. I love mules. I want to breed one of my mares to a donkey to get a mule. I'll take you over to see the baby sometime later. It's muddy right now. we got a really bad storm last night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one of the smartest dogs if i taught her how to catch frisbees in the midair does she still do that yeah. yeah any trick i tried to teach her she would learn it right away oh yeah she's so smart she kind of hates him <laughs> really <laughs> i mean she likes him but he's just uh a lot of energy spin around spin around sit <laughs> high five yeah sit sit Speak. Speak. Lay down. Good boy. She's, she knows we're leaving. She wants to go. You know how she is. She likes to ride. Yeah. Okay. Hey. <laughs> so she's just talking about the roads around here. They're really uh, pretty fucked up sometimes uh, in the rain. What, you crashed your car twice? Yeah. So you got a, a truck now? Yeah, I've got a truck and a car. What kind of truck do you have? Oh, really? Yeah. The older diesels would run forever, the ones that were really simple? Yep, and mine's, mine's definitely um, simple, and, you know, we have to do a lot of work to it, but it um, never had any issues with the motor. Well, how's Hopefully. the price of diesel fuel now? <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be better off on a motorcycle. Yeah, I'm not driving a motorcycle. Well, see, you know, the funny thing is when I fill my truck up, I feel like it lasts longer, but really what it is, it's just a huge tank and it can't get, you don't have to fill it up as much. Right. So right. I feel like if, if I fill it up, I can almost go, as long as I don't have to haul any horses, I can almost go a few weeks without refilling. Right. So there's West Virginia up there in those mountains. There's a deer. Where? Or something. Oh, I see. It's right there. Dwayne, the seller of the bike, was seriously That's into hunting and had taken trips all around the country. I told him about my YouTube channel and since then he'd been watching regularly, he said. When he told me about going after elk in the mountains of Colorado, I was seriously jealous. Year after year, I fantasize about pulling a giant freezer behind my bike as I pursue the world's elusive much, game. Yeah. Dude, that's, I mean, that's some awful, awful, awesome footage right there. Well, thank you, thank you. So just pick this baby up. The, uh, this, the big selling point on this one was uh, something like 80 miles to the gallon. Yeah. From, uh, we just rode uh, all the way from Virginia out here to this guy's beautiful uh, spot out here in West Virginia. Can't thank you enough. I think this is going to sort of fit the bill. You're more than welcome, dude. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see it one of your videos one day. You will, very <laughs> very soon. In different pegs, yeah. and I'd go ahead, especially, I'd drop something down here, because uh -huh. all the roads and stuff that you, I mean, using some mud, using that little yeah. bit of thing. Yeah. Oh, like a cover type thing? It's just yeah. a fender extension is what they call yeah. it. Yeah, okay, It just okay. keeps okay. all the mud and stuff from getting up in your engine. Uh-huh. And they make one for the back tower. It goes, actually, it goes right here. That would be good. Yeah, it would. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm anxious to uh, to give this a chance and uh, and see. I like the mag wheels. I can plug the tire uh, on the road and not have to worry about, um, about doing a tube because I'm going to get nails in it. I mean, oh, I could get one coming out of here, but That's let's true. let's You're not right. jinx it. But, uh, I got one in my car yesterday. It was yeah. an hour away from home. Completely. Ooh. Flat? Yeah. Put one of them little round spares on it? No, I was able to get to a gas station, oh, okay. luckily, and get a plug in it, so. Well, that'll work. That'll work. Actually, I'm going to get you to take me hunting sometime. Uh, I'll, I'll take you to Ohio. I'll take you right up here. And I would, this place is I would love it. Oh, there were deer as we came in. When I, oh, yeah. yeah, there was a deer down there when we came in, climbing yeah. up the hill. Yeah, there's deer, turkey. I've sort of kept in touch with a lot of people I've bought and sold motorcycles yeah. from over yeah. the years, and sometimes I'll meet up with those guys, you know, if we're in the same place. I'm going to have some. next spring. I'll, I'm try to retire i'll be 62 in march and i just i'd love to follow you somewhere mexico colorado i haven't seen none of your 
the Sturgis strips or nothing okay. like that, but I know they're on there. I'll yep. check them yep. out. I've been doing Mexico a lot lately. Okay. It gets into some thick jungle when you get down there far enough, That's where they got jaguars. I was camping in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> and, can uh, you hunt those? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I You're sure probably the can. hunted. You're they're, probably the hunted well, you, to them. Well, as you know, cats are hard to hunt because they're okay. so perceptive and elusive and stuff yes, like that. Very. So I took this down the road uh, the other day. I know it's not going to fall apart when I pull out of here, no, right? Everything good mechanically. Nothing else I need to know about it, right? I guarantee you at least make it a black spark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's a good start. If not, call me. I got a trailer. And then. Mark, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> you should be fine. You okay. Probably, okay. I'll let you ride. You probably put more miles on it in two, three days than I have in two, three years. The first thing you notice about this bike is how light it feels. Honda dropped the gas tank under the seat, which contributes to a lower center of gravity, as well as a two-cylinder motor with an almost horizontal firing angle. I expect it to be an absolute dream for bushwhacking in Mexico and Central America. My sister followed me down the hill just to make sure the wheels didn't fall off and headed back to her farm where she was waiting for one of her mares to give birth. It was going to be kind of a drag going back to a single disc front brake, but performance is not what this bike is about. However, one of the things that made riding it so addictive was the extremely torquey low end. Just pulling away from a dead stop is an adrenaline producing experience. If there's one thing I've learned, it's to take any motorcycle review with a grain of salt. How some of those reviewers are able to draw the kind of conclusions they make is baffling to me, but I looked hard at the specs and had a generally accurate idea of what to expect before I even rode it. I knew I wouldn't be getting an insane amount of power on the top end, and that the chain drive was certainly going to vibrate my teeth out on the highway, but hell, I hardly ride those anyway. What I'd be trading in high speed performance, I'd be making up for in maneuverability and crazy traffic scenarios, something which is a serious consideration in Mexico. A great touring bike, as the reviews suggest? Not so much, but I already knew that going into it. The touring windscreen Dwayne had installed was more than adequate to get the wind off my chest and shoulders, which is fine by me. The placement of the foot pegs so far back on the bike was a disappointment, although it wasn't any worse than on my ST. A feet forward position is generally much more comfortable for long distances, so I'm going to have to look for a set of highway pegs. Honda went with a 17 inch front rim, which is curious for a dual sport, and another indicator of a sport bike influence. Although probably not the best choice for heavy off-road applications, it handles like a dream in the twisties. While this is certainly not an awe-inspiring performance machine, it's incredibly simple, easy to work on, and does a little bit of everything. At the end of the day, the deciding factor was the gas mileage and the fact that she runs on 86 octane. I had one final test to see if she was a good bike or not. One of my uh, criteria uh, for a motorcycle is how well you can carry a pizza on it. Looks like I could get a pizza on there pretty good, so I'm uh, heading back home. Real scary.